hey y'all welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are new here thank you so much for joining me if you are returning you already know it you are fabulous all right so today's video guys this is a dollar general dollar tree diys video so i used mostly dollar general and dollar tree items to create these fall DIYs for y'all. A few of them aren't just so fall, you could use them as everyday decor, but I think that they all turned out absolutely fantastic. I am in love with a few of these, just absolutely in love. Some of these will definitely be going into my new home and I cannot wait to show y'all. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so for this first one, I have got four jars that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I knew immediately when I saw them exactly what I wanted to do with them. I'm gonna be using some ceramic coat in cream and also antique wax. I've got two colors of apple barrel orange. I've got the new Waverly Night Sky Blue with a light blue in acrylic paint. And then I've also got Waverly's Celery and Moss. We're gonna be painting each jar a different color. So I mixed up a couple of the oranges to get the right shade that I wanted. And then I just began to paint each jar its own color. So I end, ended up giving them all about three coats just so it had a really nice coat. And then on the third coat, that's when we're gonna add a little bit of highlight and contour to these pumpkins. So what I did was just add a little bit of antique wax and also that cream color while my third coat was still wet. And that way my pumpkins would have a little bit of dimension to them, a little bit of, you know, highlight, dimension, contour, whatever you wanna call it. It just makes them look better, I think. <laughs> then I took some twine and wrapped it around the rim of each of my lids on my pumpkins. Super duper simple. I just thought this added just an extra little element to it that I thought would go really nicely with the kind of rustic look that the pumpkins have. I've also got some lamb's ear that I picked up from Walmart that I'm gonna be using. And then I'm going to make the stems out of those little stems from the Dollar Tree along with some letters from the Dollar Tree that I'm gonna be placing on the front of each of my jars. So I just added in my leaves and then added in my stem. I then placed my letters on my jars, spelling out the word fall. And then I took some of that hula skirt from the Dollar Tree to make some bows. That's all I did to these and check out how stinking cute they are. guys so for this second one i got this little crate box in the dollar tree plus section for three dollars i also picked up some of the dollar tree leather pumpkins which might i add are gorgeous i've got some beads i have some tags from the dollar tree and also some rub on transfers that came from the dollar tree as well now I'm gonna be using antique wax and also plaster both by Waverly on my crate. So the first thing I did was paint my crate with the antique wax inside and out, just completely painted this dude. I wiped it down with an old rag, dried it really well with my heat gun and then dry brushed it very heavily with the plaster chalk paint um, all over inside and out of this little crate. It looks so, so good. Now, I'm gonna be using some moss that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna open that bag up, 
fumble it around in there, kind of loosen it up a little bit, get it to where I can get it kind of sticking out the sides. And that way you'll actually be able to see it once I get all of my leather pumpkins in. Now I just pulled those pumpkins right off the pick. They're like on a little clip. So I just pulled them right off that little clip. I bought two different colors of the leather pumpkins. I liked the brown. I didn't prefer the orange ones that much. I just really liked that brown kind of neutral natural color. I used that uh, moss. I pulled some of the moss back out and used it to just kind of place in between a few of the pumpkins. Just that way you would still get some of that green when you were looking down inside the crate, if that makes sense. Hopefully y'all can just see what I was doing. <laughs> I took the rub on transfer, cut out the portion of it that I wanted to use. There was a little one that said fall. I'm going to add that to my tag take my little scraper tool from the Dollar Tree and rub it in really, really well and then peel it back. Those rub-on transfers work so, so well. And they are so, so nice. Like, they really make something look high-end. I mean, they just look very nice. Check it out. Now, I'm going to take some twine, add a little bit of uh, masking tape to each end. I'm going to pull it through my tag and then add the masking tape to each end. That way I can add on my beads. This just helps so that the bead will go through. Now I did have a little bit of trouble getting them through there just because these were very, very small beads. These are probably like an 18 millimeter, I would think. They're, they're pretty small. So I just added in a few of the beads, decided how long I wanted this to be. I then tied it around one side so that it would kind of hang over the front, but it was still attached. And that's all I did to this little crate. And I think it turned out so, so, so cute. guys for this next one and another favorite of mine i have got six pieces of the peel and stick wallpaper from the dollar tree along with this 3d pumpkin that i picked up for five dollars in the dollar tree plus section now i took those pieces of this 3d pumpkin traced them out on the peel and stick wallpaper and then cut out each piece I numbered these as I went. That way I would know which piece went on to which side of each of these pumpkins because they had different notches cut out of them. I placed the peel and stick wallpaper onto each individual piece, front and back, and then used my sanding block to get that perfectly straight edge all the way around these. Worked out perfectly guys using that sa sanding block is perfect but look at the blue so i used a blue magic marker whenever i was tracing these out onto the peel and stick wallpaper and i got blue all over the edges of this thing so i tried to use antique wax at first i used some antique wax went around the edges wiped off the excess with a baby wipe and that didn't work out so well. So, <laughs> I ended up taking some ceramic coat um, paint in spice brown. And I used that to paint the edges of this thing to get rid of that blue line that was literally on every single piece of it, guys. You could see it all over it. So, Anyways, I just used that brown paint. I painted right along the outside edge. And if I did get any on the peel and stick wallpaper, it was no big deal because I could just take a baby wipe and wipe it right off. Super, super simple. I just used my baby wipe and wiped off any excess that I got around the edges. Now, I did wrap the stem with some twine from the Dollar Tree 
super simple. I just added a little hot glue, got it started, wrapped it up real well, and then ended it with a little more hot glue. I'm going to take some eucalyptus stem, wrap that around my stem, and also I'm going to take some lamb's ear and add that to my stem just to really dress this up a little bit. Now, I wanted it to be real neutral, but at the same time, I wanted it to be super cute. So, I did add in some little berries, and then I also took some of that hula skirt and tied a very simple shoestring bow, added that to my little pumpkin, and guys, that was it. Check out how cool this looks. I love this thing. So for this next one and my absolute favorite from this video, I picked up these two metal flowers from the Dollar General Store. Now these were half price. They were like, uh, I'm sure a 4th of July item. So I got them for $3 a piece. We're going to be taking them apart. So what I did was first just unhook the little um, hanger that was on them. I literally just used my wire cutters and bent the wire and was able to take that right off. We're going to be using that same ceramic coat in cream and also some antique wax. Now, I took the flower completely apart. There's a little latch on the back and you just unfold it and then each piece of the flower will literally come apart. So that's what I did. I just took it apart, painted the entire thing with two really heavy coats of that ceramic coat in cream. And then I went over it with the antique wax, wiped it off with a baby wipe, and then hit it with a little bit of white paint. Now here I'm going to show you how to take the flower completely apart. Super, super simple. And then I'm going to go in with some of that pink cloud, the new pink color from Waverly, y'all. It's so, so pretty. Oh my goodness. Now, I did have to do about three good coats on this just to cover up that blue that was showing through, but I just did three good coats, dried it with my heat gun, and then went in with some antique wax just like I did with the other one. I kind of focused it mainly around the edges, and then I hit it with some white paint. I took a um, beaded garland from the Dollar Tree, just snipped off the tag, and then tied it in the holes where our hanger was originally. Y'all, these turn out so, so stinking pretty. Oh my goodness. I love them so much. And I feel like dry brushing them with that white paint at the end just really, really made them pop. Check out these flowers. Ah, oh, they're gorgeous. <laughs> For this next one, I have got several pumpkins that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and also from the Dollar General Store. 
I also have two of these signs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now, the first thing I did was go through and take off all of the stems. We're going to be creating some stems for these, so we're only going to need to save a few of those. I laid out my masking paper. I'm going to be using the um, ceramic coat in cream and also the antique wax along with a little bit of white paint. I hope that you guys don't get get sick of this color because I love the combination between the cream and the antique wax. I just think it is gorgeous. But anyways, I did take a skewer from, a bamboo skewer from the Dollar Tree and just stab it into my pumpkin and that made this so, so much easier to paint. I had several of these pumpkins to paint, so I needed some way to be able to paint them and then sit them up to dry. So this was just the perfect way to do so. Now I gave each of these pumpkins two really, really good coats just to cover up any of the embellishments that were there or the lines, polka dots. I mean, some of them were really wild colors. So once I got that second coat on, I'm going to add a third coat, and we're just going to do that to get it wet, to get the, the paint pliable. That way, it'll move around. So when we go in with the antique wax, it is good and slippery. Now, I'm going to take another brush and start adding my antique wax. I'm going to go from the bottom towards the top in each of the little notches that are naturally made into the pumpkin. Y'all, this is so, so easy to do, and you literally cannot mess it up because all you have to do is go back over it with your paint if you don't like what it looks like. I then take my brush that has the original color on it, the cream, and I'm just gonna use that to blend these lines in. And as you can see there, I'm only going in one direction. I'm literally pulling it towards the top and then stopping and starting over and doing it again. I sometimes will wipe my brush off if I feel like I've gotten a, too much of the antique wax on my brush, I'll wipe it off. But check that out, y'all. So, so simple to do, and it really just brings these pumpkins to life. I mean, it makes them look so, so different. It's just totally worth it. So like I said, I just add the cream just to get my wet, I mean, get my paint good and wet, good and moving around. That way, when I go in with the antique wax, it moves really well and it's easy to blend and it just it just kind of slides on, literally. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my brush that had the antique wax, dip it in there, and then start from the bottom again and go towards the top, just in each individual line that the pumpkin has. So, so, so simple. I'm then gonna take my brush with the original color on it See how I wipe it off ever so often? I do that when I get too much of the antique wax on there and I don't want to keep like smearing it. So I just wipe it off and then continue to brush in one direction going towards the top. Now, there may be a different way to do this. This is just the way that I know to do it and I think they turned out really, really good. So you definitely need to try that technique next time you're painting some pumpkins. Now, for the stems, I decided to use some of this Model Magic. It's just air dry clay from the Dollar General store. I think you can get it at the Dollar Tree as well, but I picked mine up at the Dollar General. I just used it. I literally twisted it up into the shape of a stem, flattened it out on the bottom. That way I could hot glue it to the pumpkin, but it was just so, so simple. And a few of them I'm gonna use the original stem on. Now, for our base, I decided to take two of the signs from the Dollar Tree and some jumbo um, craft sticks and just put the two signs together. The reason I wanted a base for these pumpkins is that way you could sit this down on the center of your dining room table and have the perfect pumpkin fall um, tablescape. But then when you go to eat or whatever, you can just literally pick it all up at once. You don't have to pick up each individual pumpkin and the greenery and, you know, whatnot, whatever. And then when you're done, you just place it right back where it was. So, so simple. So I filled in the holes on the sign and then I gave it just one simple coat of some plaster chalk paint by Waverly. I then painted my stems with that Spice Brown by Ceramic Coat. Just gave it one really good coat of that spice brown. Dried it with my heat gun very carefully. You don't want to get too close because the, the clay will kind of 
melt on you. And then I went in with some Arteza Gold. I just thought it gave them the perfect, like, antiqued, rustic pop that gold did. I'm just going to hot glue these directly to my pumpkins. So, so, so simple. And I just feel like these stems made such a difference in the way that these pumpkins looked. So different. Just added a little hot glue to the bottom of the stem and then placed it right in the center of my pumpkin. Now, I laid out my greenery on my, my um, signs, my base. I laid out my greenery just to kind of figure out the placement of where I wanted my pumpkins. I've got um, a eucalyptus garland, and then I've also got some eucalyptus stems that I picked up at Walmart. But like I said, I just did that to see exactly where I wanted my pumpkins to lay. My light went out. Sorry. Oop, there it's back again. <laughs> Anyways, I then began to hot glue my pumpkins into place on the base. So, so, so stinking simple. Just adding hot glue to the very bottom and then placing it exactly where I want it on the base. I'm then going to go in with my greenery and I'm just going to take that garland and kind of ease it in between, just kind of weave it in between the pumpkins. I'm going to take some of those uh, eucalyptus stems that I got from Walmart and cut those down. That way I can place them individually wherever I want them. Now, I'm not hot gluing my greenery because I want to be able to go back and reuse this greenery if I ever needed to, but I'm just placing it where it's not going to fall out or anything. It's literally tucked up inside in between each of the pumpkins. So, so stinking simple, y'all. And I know I say that all the time, but I really try to make these DIYs where anybody could do this. So I hope that y'all enjoy these. I hope you don't get tired of hearing me say they're so, so simple, but they truly, truly are. Now, the last touch that I wanted to add to these pumpkins was I took some of that Pitberry Garland from the Dollar Tree and I just wound it around a pencil. Now, I'm a little out of frame for this, but you know the, the drill. I just wound it around a pencil and then I wound it around my pumpkin stem. Super, super duper simple. It just gave it that last little embellishment, that last little touch that it needed to really make this look realistic. And I absolutely love this. Check out those pumpkins. Ah! <laughs> guys number six so for this one i've got one of these little drawers from the dollar tree i've also got two of these signs from the dollar tree they're they're pretty good size actually they're not as small as the other little shelf sitters and then i've got four of the long um signs from the dollar tree that are good and thick they're like M MDF or whatever. I'm going to be using some tight bond uh, wood glue. And what I'm going to do is we're creating a lantern. So I added the wood glue to the side of my sign and then to the I added hot glue to the bottom of it. So I would get that immediate hold and then the hot, I mean the wood glue would be my long-term hold. So as you can see there, I'm literally just gluing these into place in the corners of this sign. So, so simple. I was very excited to find the cherry pie signs because I'm telling you, they're much bigger than the regular little shelf sitters that they have out every year. Or, well, for every season, actually. But anyways, I like these bigger ones. And I knew that it was make the perfect, perfect, it was perfect size for the big long signs um, to make a lantern. So, I just glued those all into place. Super simple. Held them. Let them dry. Took a baby wipe to get off any excess 
wood glue that I might have gotten. And then for the top, which I'm completely out of frame for, and I do apologize, but all I did was add wood glue around the edges of the sides. And then I added hot glue to the very bottom, just like I did on the bottom of this. And then I added my top right down on the, on the long signs. I hope all of that just made sense. Surely to goodness, y'all can see what I'm doing, kinda. <laughs> but I did exactly to one end what I did to the other end. I then took this little box, added hot glue and wood glue, and I'm gonna glue that to the very top. And like I said, I'm out of frame. I'm so sorry. But you'll see the full thing here in just a second, and that will help. Now, as you can see, that's how it's all put together. I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover um, two times primer plus paint in matte black. And I'm just going to give this two really good coats. I start out with a light coat and then go over it with a heavier coat on the second one. And this is what it looks like. Check it out. It's a really good size lantern, and it's really sturdy, too, because the pieces were just such good material. I'm going to add this little um, finial to the top. Now, I picked up that finial at Hobby Lobby. I'm then going to take two of these pillar candles, hot glue them together. Now, I don't, I don't recommend burning this after it's been hot glued together, but I wouldn't burn this anyways because I'm going to be sitting it right in the middle of a bunch of greenery. So do not burn this. I would use an LED candle if you wanted to do so, but this was just so I could show y'all what it would look like with a pillar candle in it. I then took some lamb's ear and started to wrap that around the candle. And then I'm gonna take some of these gorgeous, gorgeous, I cannot tell y'all how pretty these velvet pumpkins are. These came from Walmart. They were like a dollar and maybe 49 cents a piece, I think, something like that. But they were very, very reasonably priced. And I just tucked those in all the way around the lantern. Now, to make a bow for the top, which it really didn't need, but I just thought I would add one to it just for the final reveal. I'm just going to make one of those floral bows like I make. So you're going to pinch it in the middle, twist it, make another loop, and pinch it again twist it, make another loop, and pinch it again. You're just going to continue to do that process until you have about six loops in total. You just pinch it, twist it, make another loop. Pinch it, twist it, make another loop. Now, when I had it, all of my loops made, I'm then going to take a zip tie, and we're going to use that to hold all of this together. So I've still got it pinched in the middle, and then I'm just going to take that zip tie and go right around it and pull that dude tight. Tight as I can get it. Perfect. Now I'm going to snip that off and then fluff out my um, loops. So, so simple. And it makes the perfect, perfect bow to sit on top of a lantern. And they're so, so easy to make. Literally so easy to make. I did dovetail my ends. Now, if I had had more ribbon, I would have made more tails for this, but I was at the end of the roll, and so we ended up with just two tails. It's fine, though. <laughs> Anyways, this is what it turned out like, and I love it. Okay, so for this next one, and one of my favorites, now I've done these before on my channel, but I lost them in the tornado, so I thought I would do them again. These bought at Dollar General for $3 a piece. I'm going to be using my Black & Decker jigsaw that I got on Amazon. There's a link in the description 
box for it. <laughs> Description box. Anyways, I just used it to cut my pieces completely in half. Now, I'm going to be using equal parts Aileen's Tacky Glue and water. I just mix that in equal parts. Make a, uh, it's almost like Mod Podge when you get it done. And then I'm going to use that to paint the bark on the outside of this these pieces of wood. That way the bark stays intact. It doesn't chip. It doesn't fall off. It's not going to, you know, crack or anything. It's going to stay just like it is. So I just paint that on and it dries clear. So don't worry about that part. It's not going to have all that white, um, look to it or anything like that. And I put it on there pretty heavily also because I wanted it to really stay together really well because these turned out so, so stinking cute last time. So I really wanted to <clears throat> recreate these for my new home. Now I'm going to take some nautical rope that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Now this is the, the chunkier of the nautical ropes. This is the thicker one. I just cut off some, add a little hot glue to it, and then I'm just going to twist it. Literally just twist it up. Let that hot glue do its thing. It'll hold it together. I then kind of ravel out the bottom half of it, the bottom half of the um, rope. And then we're going to add that straight on top of our piece of wood. And that creates the stem for our little pumpkins that we're making, y'all. These are so, so cute. I add a little bit of lamb's ear just for some greenery. And that is literally all I did to these. I do the same thing to each of the pumpkins. I just add some hot glue to my nautical rope, twist it, feather it out, and then add it to my piece of wood. I also add in the lamb's ear. So, so stinking cute. You could even add some of the um, pitberry garland to these, and I think that that would make them even cuter. But check these dudes out. I love these. number eight and this one i actually made for my mother-in-law's front door so i have a grapevine wreath that i picked up at walmart i believe it was around five or six dollars then i also got those two little pumpkins at walmart and the d i bought at walmart along with these pumpkin picks now the pumpkin picks were around a dollar fifty two dollars something like that and then i also got some of this eucalyptus which i think is so realistic looking now i'm going to take some plaster chalk paint by waverly and paint my d super simple i just painted it inside and out all the way around i gave it two really good coats dried it with my heat gun really well and then i'm going to go in with my sanding block and distress it just going right around the edges, just to stress it a little bit. I'm then going to cut up all of my eucalyptus and begin to place it into my grapevine wreath. And as you can see there, I'm going the same direction as I'm going down the side of the grapevine wreath. I'm just popping it right in there. And it holds really well inside that grapevine wreath. There's no need to add any hot glue or anything like that. I made sure to get it on the inside portion of this wreath as, long, as well as the outside. So I went down the middle, I then went down the inside, and then went down the outside, if that makes sense. Hopefully y'all could see what I was doing, but it really made it look nice and full. And I was only wanting it on one side of the um, grapevine wreath. I'm then going to go in with my pumpkin picks. And I just kind of alternated these because some of these had the velvet pumpkins. And then some of these were just the little like plastic or foam, whatever pumpkins. So, so pretty though, guys. So, so pretty. And my mother-in-law decorates with the like traditional um, fall colors. So this was just perfect for her. 
Now, I'm going to take some um, zip ties, and that's how we're going to attach the D to the um, grapevine wreath. Super, super simple. I just went right there on that little edge where it's kind of thin. You'll see exactly where I put it. Just right there. It's kind of a thin piece, and that way you don't see so much of the um, zip tie. But we're going to cover up those spots anyways with the little pumpkins. So I kind of played around with the little pumpkins to decide where I wanted them. I was actually only going to put one of them on there. And then I decided I would use both of them. And that way I could cover up both little spots where the zip ties were. First, though, we're going to wrap the stems with some twine from the Dollar Tree just to give it that it would actually cover up the hole that was in them, but it would also give it that rustic look that I was kind of going for with this, this wreath. I added hot glue to the D and then began to add in my little pumpkins. So, so, so very simple. This was such an easy, quick maybe took me 10 minutes to put this together and it is so big and so so stinking pretty check this dude out ah i love it and i hope my mother-in-law does too <laughs> Okay, so for this last one, I have got, I believe it's like eight, <laughs> I think. I'm not even totally sure at this point. I think I have eight of those frames from the Dollar Tree, along with some of the sticker letters and the peel and stick wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. I just took my frames, opened them up, took the little piece of paper that was in them out. Now, I left the glass and the backing all intact. But I just took out that little piece of paper and used it as a template to draw out some pieces on the peel and stick wallpaper so that I could put those back into the frames. So I left the glass and I left the backing. Everything is still intact. Typically when I do uh, DIYs with the frames, I take the frame completely apart. So I thought I would mention that. <laughs> I didn't take it apart. I left them together. And then silly me, I went ahead and put them in the frames before I put the letters in. And then I was like, what am I doing? I got to go back through and put my letters on the peel and stick wallpaper before I put them in the, the frame. So I spelt out the word grateful with my letters, just added those to the peel and stick wallpaper and then added that piece of paper right back into it. I did clean the glass from where I had gotten fingerprints and stuff on it. And then I'm going to take some of these paint stir sticks that I picked up at Lowe's. I believe they were like a dollar and 80 something cents for three of them, which is a pretty good, pretty decent, I guess. Now I laid out my word grateful Made sure that I was trying to get it lined up just right. That way everything would be perfectly lined up. And then I decided to take off the hangers that were on the back. The little kickstand part. I just pulled that right off. It come right off. I'm going to save those for previous or, you know, net other DIYs because I can definitely reuse those. And then I just straightened up my word. Made sure that it was nice and straight. Everything was perfect. And most of you probably have realized at this point what I did wrong. But if you haven't already realized what I did wrong, you're going to see it here in just a minute. And it was a huge mistake. <laughs> so don't do what I just did, but you'll see in just a minute. Anyways, I just added hot glue to these paint stir sticks and then placed those evenly on the back of this to hold this word together because I wanted you to be able to hang this up on the wall so so easy this was a very quick and easy diy and then i flipped it over and look 
it's backwards. <laughs> the whole word's backwards. I had to redo it, but look, this is what it turned out like, and I think it is so pretty. today i hope that you guys have enjoyed these i always have such a good time doing this it really keeps me busy and keeps me going honestly i love doing these diys for y'all and i have honestly been trying to simplify things and make my diys where anybody could do these and recreate these customize them for your own home i've been doing a lot of diys for my new house i cannot wait to get in it i hope we're in it by uh, maybe the end of fall. That way I can use some of this stuff to decorate with. But I really do hope that you guys have enjoyed these. I thank you all so, 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 so much for being with me today. Oh, yeah. And by the way, my mother-in-law absolutely loved the wreath. One more thing before we go. Go check out my coffee shop. It is ko-fi shop blessed beyond measure. That is where you can purchase a coffee or you can also check out a lot of the DIYs that I have done on this channel and you can purchase them straight from the coffee shop. Guys, this is just somewhere for me to be able to put these DIYs and put them to good use and hope that they end up in a great home. This makes me feel very good about myself. It gives me a lot of pride when people want to buy my stuff. So please be sure and go check that out. Also, go check me out over on TikTok. And if you would like to see my latest updates, go check out this video. Thank you all so, so very much for being with me today, and y'all have a blessed day.